Brian brought up an interesting point, which is that we're paying for the projects that are over on the other side of the bay. Uh, and I, as I said, you know, they don't even want to pay for those things. Uh, folks on the other side of the bay have the opportunity, the ability to get from their place of work to their homes without having to pay a toll if they choose for the most part. If you're on the upper shore, you don't have that choice. You can't just choose to either not come across the Bay Bridge or go up on 95 and come around the top side without paying that toll. And one of the folks who can really talk about that <coughs> is from the Upper Shore, Delegate Mike Schmiegel. Amen. Well, I had an opportunity to call and talk to the acting director of MDTA. And I told him I wanted to know the numbers. How did you get at this amount? Well, he couldn't give me how they got at that amount. I said, well, then give me the paperwork you used to get to that amount. Well, delegate, that would take a lot of work to put that together. I said, well, wait, somebody has to have it together. If you got to this amount, you want to raise the tolls. Well, it doesn't exist. So I'm still waiting for that. I asked him before we met here today so I could have that, so we could address those questions about how they got there. But what I did get him to do is to admit that one and a quarter billion dollars of the money that's going to be raised from these tolls is going to pay for the ICC connector. Whoa! What I also found out is while there's a small toll on the ICC connector, they're not raising those tolls. They're not raising the tolls on the ICC. Again, the Eastern Shore is looked at as a pocket to be picked. We're going to pay for the boondoggles over on the Western Shore. They want to put in a purple line, a red line, and every other line. We don't have mass transit here. It's going to destroy our businesses. It's going to destroy tourism. It's not that we don't want to pay it. We can't pay it. And they have to understand that. What I want to hear is what other alternatives were looked at. Did they look at doing away with things that we could do without? Do we really need to have an MDTA police? Could we have state police do that? No. Aren't there other things that we could do to yes. cut those costs? I say we can. And I ask all of you, when you go in there today, to make sure that they hear your voice and what it is that we want to do to stop this. The ICC is not something that the people on the Eastern Shore should pay for. There is a war on rural Maryland, and it continues. It's with the septic systems, it's with the new land Maryland, it's with respect to what they want to do with telling us that a farmer can only subdivide his land one time, and now they want to tax us out of being able to live here on the Eastern Shore, because if you go over there to work from Ken Island, it's going to be astronomical. You're going to have to move to be able to afford to do that. If you're a veteran and you've got to go to Perry Point to get help, you'll lose your benefits if you don't show up. That's another $8 every time you have to go. And if you're disabled or you're a senior citizen and you've got to get to a hospital that's on the Western Shore, you've got to pay that because they're going to take away that sticker we use locally. There's no excuse for not allowing us to keep that sticker we use locally and to at least take care of the people on the Eastern Shore. It's time we stood up and we be recognized as we are independent people here. We should be appreciated, not just Montgomery County, Prince George's, Baltimore City. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.